you so much, Mr. Moderator. In regards to how can we use Islam <clears throat> to promote peace at individual level, I think at personal level, the beginning is to appreciate that man is the most respectable and dignified creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you appreciate that, then you connect to what Professor Ampata has said, that peace starts with yourself. That's why these days counselors, by the way, emphasize self-love. If you do not love yourself, then it is by greater reason that you are going to disrupt peace and love for others. So the fact that Islam laid down the foundation that وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ We created man in the best mold. The fact that Islam laid down the foundation that وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We indeed have respected, dignified a human being. That one alone, it should be an entry point to promote peace. Please love yourself. You are beautiful, you are not ugly. By the way, even if the whole world say that you are not beautiful, tell yourself that I'm beautiful because the fact is you are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has conferred upon you that natural beauty that no one has the mandate or the right to challenge it. So once you appreciate that, it is the beginning and the foundation of promoting peace. Secondly, Islam had talked about the peace of mind. Allah says, amanu <clears throat> Those who believe and they take peace with themselves by remembrance of Allah. Allah bi dhikrillahi tathma'innul qulub. In the remembrance of Allah indeed is where peace lies. So it goes without saying that our spiritual connection to Allah as individuals, it is one way that actually helps us to appreciate peace for ourselves and even peace for others. At family level, the most fundamental principle of family is cooperation. Why did I get married? I got married because I couldn't live an independent life. Cooperation in my own definition is what I lack is found in you. And that is promotion of peace. That is why, if at all we go back to our families and we rethink about the way how we treat each other, how the husband treats the wife, how the wife treats the husband, how the parents relate to children and vice versa, this is actually the foundation for world peace. Because Charity begins at home. So if we are talking about building world peace, there is no way we cannot talk about family peace. Otherwise, children who grow in such a violent home, they get out and also become violent to others. And that is why Islam, when it talks about the foundation of family, it says, uh, that is Surah Turum. Wajalna lakum. Wajala baina kum mawadda tan wa rahma. Wajala baina kum mawadda tan wa rahma. Wamin ayatihi 
an khalaka lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha among the signs of allah is that he created amongst you mates the husband and the wife so that we can get peace litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma and he put in between you love and mercy and of course you can't talk about peace except that we are talking about love we are talking about mercy finally how does islam look at a person who violates peace first of all we should not allow people to violate peace because we need it and that's why quran has laid down those foundations wa in fa'ifatan min al-mu'mina qtatalu fa aslihu bainahuma whenever we see misunderstanding others have an obligation to step in to reconcile so that we can promote peaceful coexistence so that there might be there must be reconciliation and islam goes ahead and says that fa in baghat ihdahuma ala al-ukhra faqatilu allati tabghi hatta tafi'a ila amri allah once you see one sect transgressing over the other violating the peace then it is our obligation as the community to fight it so that it can go back to normal and the normal in this case is to go back to peace and those who promote peace of course they are praised hal jazaul ihsan illa al ihsan those who promote peace we praise them we hold them in high esteem and at the end of the day allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them with the best thank you so much thank you so much finally uh, uh, directorship still it's a similar question how uh, several times in a peace in a peace in a peace you should have peace with yourself so that you can uh, you can you can project it to others now many may wonder how this is achievable first of all one might ask themselves is it possible for me not to have peace with myself if yes how can i uh, uh, achieve peace in case i am among those people uh, who don't have peace how can i know that i don't have peace with myself and how can i how, how can I have a balanced mind as an individual to have peace with myself, then to my family, and then we project it to the whole world? This is the last question to the rectorship. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, um, thank you very much. You see, um, I would like to thank um, Dr. Walusim. He has brought a very important thing. And um, you see, how do you realize, how do you know that you don't have peace? First of all, look at it the other way around. Because you are not going to look for it from the uh, where you pass. What should I do to have peace? That is the first thing. Then you can be, because peace is incremental. You, it is incremental because of the economics we teach. There is a scarcity. And when there is a scarcity, you have a choice. That's what they say. And this is, is Islam itself. Because you want everything in the market, before you want to have peace, you don't have the resources to get everything. Because you want to have all the type of cars that are being driven, you want them before you rest. Not so. And so on and so forth. Even when you construct a house, Dr. Hafiz had said, you will still say, uh, it's director, I think, who say, you will still say, this is not the, the house fit for me. Even when you get married, you will say that, I think I made a mistake. This is not the right wife or husband that I would have got, and I'm wasting my time. So I want you to, to know where the, the having no peace with yourself starts from. It is economic, it is social, it is material, it is uh, anything you can bring but the most important thing is first of all make sure that you interrogate yourself who am i 
what aspects am I supposed to have? What is the best that Allah has given us, has given me, has given you as a family? Why, why you must compare you, yourself with others? There is no time to explain everything, but I'm just giving you hints. You must compare. That's why they tell you, Dr. Hafidi says with the others, you must go to the hospital. See that people are waiting, praying that their legs amputated in time. They have been told that the doctor has not come, or the person to remove the hand has not come. He says, Ya Allah, help me so that the person comes quickly. You can imagine that one. You had the diabetes, you had this, but the, it is now a dangerous part of your body. So the moment you see somebody waiting for nothing good, in as far as logic is concerned, you appreciate and say, I have got capital. I have everything that I need. So that type of approach, even in education, don't look at professor because I have just finished my degree. I must not be at peace with myself. Look behind and see how many people at your village level and your family and so on are like you. That is how you go. Even children, don't look at the 30 that has been produced by uh, Sheikh Mazrui. Look what those who are looking for one, but they have resorted to stealing from Lago Hospital and paying somebody to go and steal a child who is completely not yours, 190%. These are the issues. The moment you have all those in the ranks I have mentioned, you are now at peace with yourself. You look at your wife and you say, this is beautiful because I have seen also somebody who is not going to have one eye, but is somebody's wife. Mine has got two eyes, they are okay. This and that and so on. Thank you very much. That's why he's a professor. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll tell you a story. Uh, some of you have heard of uh, the Rockefeller Foundation, one of the premier foundations in the USA, which was started by Rockefeller, who was a very rich man. I think he was considered to be the, the richest man at, at his time, 1920s, 1930s. He had oil business, steel and industry and all that. However, he developed a sickness. So much so that even the hair started falling off his what? His head. But whenever he went to the hospital, they checked and checked, and they couldn't find any physical illness. Until uh, there was a doctor who probed and probed and found out that Rockefeller, although he was rich, he would get, <laughs> but he was the richest man in the world. Basically, he was obsessed about losing the money. He had billions, but he couldn't sleep, thinking that Twaha is going to take his one dollar. <laughs> so the doctor told him that I don't think you are suffering from anything except yourself. Uh, basically, he was not at peace with himself. Uh, my advice to you, stop worrying about money. In fact, start giving away your money. He said, what? Yes. You have too much. You can't. Because if you have a billion dollars, how many beds do you need? You still need one bed. You understand? <laughs> so Rockefeller... Uh, at least he was wise enough to listen to the doctor. He stopped worrying about the dollar <laughs> and started giving away his money and started finding foundations to charity. So it goes back to where a professor was telling us, and in Islam we know that because uh, 
I don't know whether it was Sayyidina Ali or it was a hadith, uh, which says that the best thing that a human being can be uh, thankful for is to be content with what they have. Was it Sayyidina Ali or it is a hadith? It was Sayyidina Ali who, who gave that wisdom. Uh, so be satisfied with what you have. But if you want something more, work for it and trust in Allah. It should become a, a life and death thing. I, uh, why is Jagenda uh, driving a V8? I also so have a V8. You are 32, I'm 67. Uh, so come and find out where I was when I was 32. Then we can talk. So be content with what you have. But also, if you want to aspire for more, there's nothing wrong with that. Allah does not want you to be in a stationary position. But this idea of being dissatisfied with whatever you have, it means that even when you get the V8, you will not be satisfied. So it's important for us to find a way of being, as uh, Dr. Walsin said, loving yourself. Loving yourself means loving who you are, what you have, where you are, but if you want to aspire for more, work and trust in Allah. That way you are building your psychology. Since we have ladies here and young people, young, young men, um, usually when I attend weddings, they are usually giving advice to the ladies, but they never give advice to the men. It's as if the men, they know what being a husband is. So young men, do you know what it means to be a husband? You need to go to your uncles and talk to them. And you ladies who have spent most of your life in boarding schools also, go and find out from your aunties what it means to be a wife, what it means to be a mother. Because as Dr. Walsh said, if the family does not have peace, it means your products, your children, are not going to have peace and they become trouble causers all over the community. We must build homes where there is love, where there is understanding, where there is patience, where there is contentment, where there is feeling for each other's pain, where there is sharing of obligations. These days men and women work but when you go back home, you want to read the new vision and the woman who, who you came with together, you want him now to start another line of work for you as you are seated in the what? Is that being fair? We said, we, we are told that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to sew his own clothes. But he had more wives than he, you and I. It means that that sharing, talk about how do we achieve peace by working. The work ethic brings peace. But if somebody is idle, they are not working, they want to depend on others, that's the source of a problem. So some of the answers we are giving you, they are just the tip of the iceberg. The rest, since you are in a university, visit the library and read about and get more knowledge. <laughs> Don't be point on just us. Assalamu alaikum.
and I just wanted to conclude what he has said it, because we are in global somebody would say are we talking about family it is additive from yourself you go to a family you go to a village you go for a community you go to the country the country is at peace with another you go to then, then you will have global peace because you have started well and therefore you will end well thank, thank you. you so much uh, now mr secretary all right now there has never been a period in the history of mankind where we have the level of information available to an individual without much effort the ones that have uh, I have studied Islamic history. People used to move from one town to another just to look for one hadith. A person goes through the desert just to look for one hadith. But now in our generation, this, this gadget here has essentially combined the entire, not just the world, the entire universe here. You don't need to even move. And the challenge is, all the hadiths, the various Islamic talks are here, but the negative forces are also using this same gadget in order to get to us. Now, the negative forces have very many dimensions, but uh, the ones that I can very quickly talk of is, for example, the homosexual community. They put a lot of content here. And for them, they don't just dump videos talking about themselves here. They use very high-end psychologists to advise them on how to crack the human mind. You see, the human mind, Allah designed it like the way these computers of ours are. You can program it if it does not discover that it's being programmed. For example, you can convince a girl to begin admiring fellow girls just progressively. You don't come in one day. Slowly by slowly. One of the things they do, they show you couples that are homosexual. But they also show you that these couples are actually successful. So you who is thinking that a homosexual is some lousy, disorganized person, they show you a CEO of a large company, and they have, she's a woman, and she has a wife. So if you ask yourself things about children now, how do they get children? She shows you that they have adopted some children. They are now their children. So, what new question do you have? Success, the person is successful. Children, she has also children. Okay, they are not hers exactly, but they are, they are children. So by providing this kind of content, they slowly by slowly program you into one of the two. Either you are not going to join, but you are not going to condemn. Because that's one very important level of success. If I can stop Dr. Abdullah Hafiz talking negatively about homosexuality, I have covered half the journey. He will not discourage the other one whom I'm cracking to, to join or they crack you totally and you join information about funders the ones who are providing money to fund all these homosexual activities you don't get it from your home it is here so you come here you go around tiktok and you'll find a phone number saying ah we have our simple club of peer whatever our phone number is here so that negative content that is currently very readily available because now with the channels like TikTok, you don't even need to be a friend of Jagan that to access his content. Because the others, the other social media models were a bit more restricted. You have to be connected to the individual in order to access their content. But this one, even if you have no account, once you open the first page, they show you videos. So it is causing all this negative influence. And we pray to Allah SWT to protect us because ultimately, don't think you are very difficult to crack. You have a brain which is just a computer system. Unless you protect yourself with a lot of avocado and focus on, on, on yourself as a Muslim, Allah, they can crack you. They will simply use the way your brain is structured and, and they will crack you. 
you just have a computer that can be correct. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Dr. Hafiz, one minute, your final message to the audience. Thank you. My final message to the audience is actually to emphasize the significance of peace. We need each other and the way how the Almighty had created us, He created us in such a way that we need to serve each other's interest and we need to work in a way that complement each other. Once we appreciate that as the foundation of our human existence, then as Professor Mpata said, it is additive from this level individual, we shall transfer it to family, then to community, then to nation, then to the international scene. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Directorship, one minute for your final message. Um, mine is uh, um, the audience. First of all, I'm very appreciative that you have appreciated the importance of uh, the convention. And I think it is, has not been an effort fruitless. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Wallace and the rest. And uh, of course, I have uh, emphasized that uh, we are very, very appreciative. What is important in this piece is that don't pretend is my message. We pretend to pray. We pretend to give charity. We pretend to forgive. We pretend to love one another. You pretend to love yourself. Don't pretend. Go back, look at yourself, re-examine yourself, and be responsible. That's what I'm saying. Present, orderly, watchful, enthusiastic, responsible. Present, when they put up this one, you are still young, be present. Because it is optional. You can decide it to be anywhere. But I am sure you are not like those who have remained behind. Be present. Be orderly. Know what, what you are going to do when. Even if it is something. Because Allah did it. He, he has given us when to play sex. How, when to fast. When to marry. And so on and so forth. So you, you are present. You are orderly and you are watchful of what he has said and you are enthusiastic you make self-discover every time this is new this is what i knew i only knew my own now i have i can be able to recite this one and then be responsible don't say that because my father has money i will not marry because i'm a professor i don't know to look at people who are uh, one with no degrees because I'm um, not this, this is what it is. Make sure you are responsible. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think we have exhausted the subject. So I'll end by giving you the prayer and greeting of Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you. Islamic media. Islamic media. Islamic media.